Cameron McAvoy won the world 50 metres freestyle title by 0.51 seconds, which is the largest margin of victory ever in the men's 50 freestyle world championship final. Have a look at this. Away in the 50 free final, McAvoy and Alexi in four and five, defending champion, proud in three, he's got away well, so too Cooper in lane six, but going through in lane four, Cameron McAvoy, he's looking strong, he's looking powerful, he's after a world record, surely not, McAvoy on his way home, who's going to get the silver, McAvoy will get the gold, another gold to Australia, silver goes to Alexi, proud gets the bronze, oh that was a domination, oh look at that's astonishing. I mean, 50 freestyle. Mind you, you and I couldn't run 50 freestyle <laughs> that quickly. So I thought I'd speak to Cameron and introduce you to this remarkable man. I'm not too sure how many people know about this. And he joins me from Brisbane. Well, Cam, <laughs> I mean, it's a remarkable achievement. You are the fastest swimmer in the world, but it's the largest margin of victory ever in a 50 freestyle world championship final. What did you think when you looked up and saw the time and knew that at long last, after all those years, you were a world champion? First and foremost, for me, it was relief. Uh, but also after seven years of, of really fighting it out in training, doing, I guess, doing methods of training and, and going to international competitions year after year, falling short, knowing my potential was much, much further along, much higher ceiling that I could hit. It was, uh, I guess, justification as well. Uh, it was, in a way, a risk to uh, create this new approach to sprint freestyle and sprint swimming. Um, but on the other hand as well, it was a massive privilege to, to 18 months ago, just sitting on my own, coming up with, I guess, the ideal approach to what I believe would be the best way to train and race the 53. Uh, having it all in theory, it was all in my head, putting that on paper and then spending day to, the day-to-day -day process of living it out, making it a reality, uh, creating something from, from thoughts in your head into an actual real lived experience mm. and then having it be done on the world stage with a gold medal. With, with a time like that, it was, yeah, it's, it was almost poetic. And I all. know. See, most people can swim but you're the fastest swimmer in the world. Now, my old man used to say, the world's a big place, and it is. So how does it <laughs> make big. you feel? I mean, you're about 8 billion people in the world. There is, at the moment, no swimmer faster than you. Um, when you wake it's, up in the morning, how does it make you feel? Eh? It's a weird feeling. I remember uh, the day after I won, it was the final day of competition, and I'm surrounded by the best swimmers in the world, there, there's a magnitude of people out there that are just doing crazy things in the water in their respective events. But it was almost, it was surreal because I, I sat back and I just thought if any one of these wanted to challenge me over a one lap in the water, <laughs> I've, I've got it. That's it. And it, it was just an odd odd position to be in at a world championship. So, yeah, yeah like I said, it's a privilege. Um, it's, it's, it's a space I haven't uh, sat in for, for as long as I think I probably could. Um, but also in saying that, yeah, it's, it's, it's See, new, basically, but also something I want to extend. I mean, basically you decided you had to arrest this continuing slump. You decided to stand orthodox training methods on their head. Uh, what did coaches think of what you were doing or was there a bit of, as I said earlier, talk behind your back? What's this McAvoy up to? <laughs> uh, I heard whispers throughout uh, the season leading into the World Championships um, that I guess were quite negative, that they were kind of of the, of the tone, let's just wait and see um, type of thing, type of stance to be in. Uh, and then also post the World Championships, I've heard a lot of comments saying that the only reason I was able to swim those speeds was because of the large block of training and traditional volume that I did as a, as a kid and in my, yes. in my career. That's called, self just, that's called self-justification by the people who would say that. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, you've, yeah. You've well, achieved, I mean, I mean, you've achieved these massive margins and no one wins by that amount. We saw that 50 freestyle fight. No one wins by that. It's the biggest margin in the history of 50 freestyle swimming. Um, why, 
this is a very personal thing, I know, but I mean, you walk up and down the street, no one knows who you are. Why do, think, why do you think few people know about this, which is why I'm interviewing you? I think you know, to, to be the best in the world. I mean, we talk about the best tennis players in the world, the best soccer players, and I'm talking about world sports, which swimming is. They're all on heaps of money. How do you go for funding? Well, swimming, as you know, swimming was massive in Australia in the late 90s, in the early 2000s, particularly around Sydney 2000. Uh, since then, there's been a pretty dramatic decline in, I guess, the popularity of the sport, in the uh, the, the ability of, of having those in the sport in the public eye. Um, and I, I, I don't really have an answer for it, really. Um, no. I, I know there's ebb and flows in terms of how yes. how things go, and then you go through a, a large period. You go, you can go through slumps and, and whatnot. But with Brisbane 2032 coming up, there's there's no reason why mm. swimming can grow again and become a larger part yes. of life in Australia. G- Gina, we are, we are, G- Gina Reinhardt's been very generous. Gina Reinhardt's been very generous towards Australian athletes, so there is something there, yep. isn't it? I mean, what do you get for winning a world title except an unengraved medal? <laughs> yeah, the yeah, medal. What, the medal tell, was tell our viewers. Tell our viewers. The medal doesn't even have his name on it, and nor does it say it's the fifty yeah. freestyle. What? It, it, I mean, it does hold an extreme amount of sentimental value, but yeah, there's uh, none of the engraving on it. Um, and effectively, for a win, it was twenty thousand uh, US dollars in total. Right, twenty thousand. Yeah, well done. Now, look, I'm saying to businesses out there, you want to be the best. They should sign this bloke up. He can tell them to have the guts to make significant changes, believe in yourself, and then work your backside off towards your goal. Just tell our viewers quickly before you go what you're studying. You once told me you wanted to go to the moon. Yeah, I still do. If the opportunity is there, if um, if anyone at the Australian Space Agency has plans <laughs> to send any Aussies to the moon, I'll put my hand up for that. Um, at least as far as I'm aware, there's no no plans as of yet. Uh, but yeah, I, I was studying uh, theoretical physics and applied mathematics. There you are. Good. <laughs> I think you can make a good living, by the way, revolutionising swimming training. All those mums and dads getting up at 4am to let their kids plough up and down the pool. I mean, that's good yeah. for some, but you've proved it's not good for everybody. Now, Cameron, look, I'm a hard marker, very hard marker. But I say with every sense of conviction, what you've done is beyond phenomenal. It is one of the greatest Australian sporting performances ever, in my opinion. 